This video introduces the mathematical objects known as matrices. A matrix, or in its plural form, matrices, a matrix is just a numerical array or a table of numbers, just like we can see here, where we have the matrix A, written in bold, uh, equal to this table of numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, minus 2, 0, and so on. There are a lot of new terms associated with matrices that we'll become familiar with and that we need to know about. One of them is the dimension of a matrix, or the size of the matrix. And we talk about the number of rows by the number of columns. So A here is a 3 by 4 matrix in terms of dimension. Elements are the individual numbers or objects inside of a matrix. So elements here are 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Columns and rows, as you would imagine, a row is something like this, the first row of A. And a column is something like this one. The third column of A is 3, 1, 0. We also have things called zero matrices and identity matrices, and we'll see something about those later. Square and rectangular matrices, the transpose of a matrix, and also equality of matrices. We'll learn about all these sorts of things, as well as arithmetic of matrices and how to use matrices to solve problems in other videos. Another thing to note is that when we're writing matrices by hand or on, with pen and paper, we can't actually bold numbers, uh, bold letters like this. So normally what we would do is something like a the letter itself with a double underline to indicate that it's a matrix, as opposed to vectors which are usually drawn with a single underline. So let's talk a little bit more about terminology. The elements, as I said, are the individual entries in a matrix. We usually denote them in lower case with a subscript for their row and column number. So here, little a, 3, 2, means the third row and second column of the matrix A. So we go to the third row and the second column and we find that A32 is equal to minus A34 would be equal to 2, and A13 would be equal to the number 3. Columns and rows, like we saw, are vertical or horizontal lines of entries in a matrix. So row number 2, we can see up here, is minus 2, 0, 1, and 3. Sometimes we write that as a vector, and sometimes still we might write that as a2. We could also find that the fourth column of A would be 4, 3, 2, and so on. The dimension is the size of a matrix. And a matrix size is usually determined or written in terms of the number of rows by the number of columns. Here we have three rows and four columns in A, so A has dimension 3 by 4. We call it a 3 by 4 matrix. It's rectangular because those numbers are not equal. Let's have a look at an example. Here we have a matrix M. We're asked to see what the dimension of M is, then to write down the second column matrix of M, and then write what is the value of element M34 and M43. Give yourself a couple of moments now to have a go at that, and then come back to the video and see if you've got the same as I have. Okay. The dimension of M, remember that dimension refers to the number of rows by the number of columns. We can see that M has one, two, three rows, and one, two, three, four, five columns. So the dimension of M is three by five. The second column matrix of M is just the second column here. So we can just write that out as follows. You can see that I've used the notation M matrix, a star to mean all of the rows, and a 2 to mean the second column. And we just put the 2, minus 1 and 2 inside a matrix or vector set of brackets. Finally, what is the value of M34? Well, little M34 just means the third row and fourth column. So we go down to the third row across to the fourth column and see that that's equal to 6. What about M43? Well, that's talking about the fourth column of M, sorry, the fourth row of M. We can see that there is no fourth row of M, so M43 does not exist, because we have no four, fourth row in this matrix. A little bit about special matrices now. A zero matrix is just as a matrix which has all of its entries equal to zero. Later on when we talk about arithmetic of matrices, you'll find that when you add a zero matrix to another matrix, you don't change the original matrix just like when we add zero to any number. 
Square matrices are just matrices which have the same number of rows as columns, so a 3 by 3 matrix, for example. An identity matrix is a square matrix with all zeros in it except for the diagonal entries, which are ones. At various times, we'll need to sum the diagonal elements of a square matrix, and we call that quantity the trace of a matrix. And we write TR of A, or the trace of A, is equal to A11 plus A22, and so on, down to the final diagonal entry ANN, let's call it. That's just the sum of the elements on the diagonal of the square matrix. There's a thing called a transpose of a matrix, and that's just when you turn the rows of a columns, uh, rows of a matrix into the columns of a new matrix, a transpose matrix. Finally, matrices are only equal when the corresponding elements of two matrices are all equal. We'll see in a moment how that might be useful. So here's an example. First of all, we're asked what's the transpose of this matrix B, and then if these two matrices are equal, what are the only possible values for X and Y? Again, give yourself a moment to try this out for yourself before coming back and following through in the video. Okay, when we transpose a matrix, remember that on the previous slide we learnt that that means the rows become the columns of a new matrix. So B is a 2 by 5 matrix. So B transpose, which we write capital B matrix with a big T, in the superscript, will be a matrix with five rows and two columns, the opposite of what B had. The first row of B will become the first column of B transpose. So we write 1, 2, minus 1, 0, and 1 in that column. The second row of B becomes the second column of B transpose, 0, 3, minus 2, 3, and 0. And that's the transpose matrix. In part B, we're asked, what are the only possible values that X and Y can take on if we have this matrix equality? Remember that if two matrices are equal to each other, their corresponding entries or elements must be equal. So we know that we must have 2X minus Y equal to 2, the first elements equal to each other, and minus Y equal to 0. Both of these must be true simultaneously. Now the first one doesn't tell us enough information, but if we look at the second equation here, that's telling us that y must be 0. And using that, we can substitute back into the second equation, because these both must be uh, true simultaneously. Setting y equal to 0, we have 2x equals to 2, and that tells us that x must be equal to 1 if we divide both sides by 2. So all in all, we must have y equal to 0 and x equal to 1. And it turns out that that property of equality, plus some useful techniques that which we can develop later, are very useful when we try to solve multiple equations at the same time. And that's one of the big uses of matrices. That's it for now in the Introducing Matrices video. Have a look in some other texts and check out how they look at introducing matrices. Attempt the exercises from the worksheet and as usual note in your cheat sheet any important definitions that you think you might need to remember.